A new bill is supposedly coming out to block rioters and vandals from getting coronavirus unemployment benefits. This sounds like something that will never happen because it's reasonable. Absolutely, John, and thanks for having me back on. But uh, listen, kudos to Indiana Representative Jim Banks for introducing the Support the Peaceful Protest Act, where if anyone who's arrested and convicted for any of the, the rioting or looting uh, that has gone on in these cities, they will lose any access to any benefits that they may be receiving right now uh, via the federal unemployment system. And I think that's a great job by him. Uh, unfortunately, as you said, it makes sense. Um, it may not pass through the democratically controlled House. But listen, let's keep our fingers crossed. Maybe it, it's something that, you know, that can be introduced in the U.S. Senate. Uh, but I would say, listen, there needs to be some consequences here, John, for these derelicts and degenerates that are going through all of our cities, whether it's New York City, Chicago, Detroit, you name the city. And I bet you they're all controlled by Democratic mayors and governors who have enabled this chaos. And you know what? They need to be held accountable. So why not, hopefully, someone in Congress enable some sort of legislation that can do this? It sounds reasonable. I mean, I don't know how we're going to find them. Oh, oh, do you want unemployment? Uh, are you a looter? You know what I mean? It may, you know, maybe if we tag their phones or do some, you know, I spy George Orwell stuff and start tracking them. Um, but, you know, I think you said it best. You said it's all these Democratic mayors. It is. It's all, there's no doubt about it. There's all blue states with blue cities inside them for the most part who have the most progressive mayors around, like the, the mayor in, in, uh, up in Seattle. She said, it's like a street fair. It's going to be a summer of love. Then they came to her house. She was calling the cops to get rid of the looters. Just like in Chicago, same story, right? So, um, and right here in New York. I mean, you know, you know how I feel about Mayor de Blasio. I think he's a mutt. But, you know, he came right out, came right out the other day and said, I think police should be able to figure out how to tell the difference between a peaceful protester and an Antifa anarchist. How can they tell? Everybody's got bandanas and masks on and hats. How can they tell? He's, he's actually sticking up for the anarchists and say cops should be a little more deliberate in figuring out if they're anarchists. Well, John, again, it's a reminder about the ineptitude of these Democratic mayors and governors. And over the weekend, I had to laugh. I almost spilled my wine listening to the mayor from Portland. This clown has enabled anarchy for over 90 days, and he has the audacity to blame the president of the United States. I'm sorry, is the president governing in Portland, John? Of course not. Is the, is, is the president governing in New York City or Chicago or St. Louis, or all these other disaster and dumps of cities? I mean, it's ridiculous. It's like, and of course the liberal media enables this because they don't call out these democratic mayors and governors who are absolute fools. Fernando, you know, it's Money Monday, so I, I always say you're a money guest because your thoughts are always right on the money. But um, speaking of money, uh, I've been talking about this for a while. There's a scary thing out there that a lot of seniors don't even realize, or people approaching seniorhood, um, that there's a huge retirement gap out of there. Most people think they saved their whole life, they retire at 65, and they're set for life. Um, most people have, on average, about six years' worth of living expenses when they retire at 65, and 75% of those people will live to 80. So that puts them in a really precarious position of 10 more years in their elder years with zero money. Um, and now COVID's making it worse for these people. Interest rates are down, income is down. Um, what, what, is there any alternatives? What's happening to help these people? Well, right now, John, what I'm seeing across the country is a lot of different financial firms, uh, both on a small and even a large scale, are providing services at even free rates to seniors that are approaching these retirement years. And I think that's a wonderful thing for them to do. And we're seeing it more and more because as you just alluded to, the amount of expenses that they're going to have after retirement is not gonna be sufficient in terms of what the average savings is right now. And I would argue that aside from many seniors being very proactive, I think some of them are looking to work a little bit longer, which again, depending on their health situation may not be the best thing, but for those, for those who can, uh, they're looking at that option. But more importantly, I think they're also looking at what these financial services are providing, John, in terms of budgeting, in terms of other ways that they can take any investments that they have. I think that's a wonderful dynamic that's, ha that's happening right now in the financial sector, where these, again, these, these consulting firms are helping seniors all across the country. And I'll tell you right now, during COVID, I think that's a welcome sight for so many millions of people that are hoping to retire soon, but they may not be able to uh, under the current financial uh, status. 
Yeah, I mean, it's getting scarier by the minute, certainly for old people if they haven't planned properly. And even the ones that have planned proper, properly, um, there's a gap from what they think they have at their current living expense and what they really need to live out the rest of their life. Um, Fernando, um, what's happening on the cool scene in New Jersey? I see that, you know, at least for outdoor, I see that you, you're you out there about town. How, is, how are things in, on the social scene? Good? Well, a couple of good things. Number one, starting tomorrow, September 1st, gyms will, will be reopening in New Jersey. I know that for thousands of New Jerseyans, that is big. just a big, big. That's share. big on the mental health side, too, honestly, because you got people Absolutely. that are crazy OCD, and part of their routine every day is to go get their green drink and go to the gym and say hello to the same four people and leave, you know, and then it takes that whole piece out of their daily routine. I think people, no gyms, I think, is actually making people more mentally crazy. Absolutely, and it's going to be extremely therapeutic for those that enjoy workouts, and also, too, this Friday, uh, the indoor dining will resume in New Jersey at only a 25% capacity. Okay. Which I think it should be higher because I'm not sure if you saw over the weekend, John, CDC numbers came out where, again, it's sort of it, you know, it. enabling people that a large portion of those that, you know, perished from COVID uh, were really at a small amount. I mean, people who perished from COVID uh, had other underlying conditions. No, it's so crazy. It's so crazy. The spin is already on, so I wasn't even going to talk about it today. But, you know, for those of you who missed it, the people who died in America of strictly COVID-19 is 6% of the total number reported. 94% of the number reported had two to three other comorbidities. So they didn't die from COVID. They died because they were obese. The majority of people who died from COVID uh, were obese. And the majority of the other people who died were over 75. And half of them were in nursing homes. So the real American total of people who were fairly healthy and not living in a nursing home was 6% of the number. And even if, yeah. you know, Fernando, let's say, all right, that's just some conservative talk there. You're, you're bumbling up the numbers and everything. Let's double it. Let's say it's 12%. It's 30,000 deaths from a new cause. You know what I'm saying? So this whole thing is, I don't want to say pandemic like they planted it, but the reaction from the left, all because of the election, you see more and more, it's all, it's all been a scheme. John, absolutely. And listen, we're looking at a number of a little over 9,600 people in this country that perished from COVID simply on the virus. And again, my heart goes out to all those families. But as you said right now, a lot of the underlying conditions, that's what killed people uh, mm. nationally. And I think it's, it's very irresponsible of the liberal media to not report on this accurately. And as we all know, there's an agenda there. The election's coming. This old vote by mail fraudulent nonsense is being pushed here in New Jersey by the governor. And also, I wouldn't be surprised if Governor Cuomo is nice to push that in New York as well. Don't, don't be surprised, John, if that's coming also. What? Vote mail and voting? Yep. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. No, no, no. He's already trying. I'm working on um, one of my friends told me that his mom's been dead for like 10 years and um, he got a ballot at the house for her. She was a registered Democrat. So I'm trying to get my hands on that and the death certificate, which will be a nice, you know, real life example. I'm working on it. But, uh, you know, man, I know you're uh, always doing it in Jersey. I appreciate you making time for us every week. You're the bomb. And uh, you know what? Yeah. Seriously, I was listening to somebody who's really objective and smart on this and said we have a huge obesity crisis in America. And the majority of these people, the comorbidity was obesity or obesity-related issues. And uh, maybe the government should be taking a look at that. Hopefully uh, we get out of this thing in one piece. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate it. Good luck Thank to those know. dirty cowboys of yours. All right. Absolutely, John. Thank you.